The ocean, the largest habitat on the planet. One that supplies humans with life from fresh food, producing over half the oxygen we breathe. It regulates our climate and provides almost endless forms of recreational activities. But is our ocean healthy? The UN states the world's ocean has a rating of 60 out of 100, with some countries being as low as 36. Here in Australia, we fare better as our ocean is rated at a 77. How healthy is our ocean is a complicated question to answer. One of the ways to examine is to take a look at the ocean's health by examining its biodiversity. Western Australia has one of the most biodiverse coastlines in the world. From the tropical reefs of the Ningaloo to the almost endless Great Southern Reef which stretches for 71,000 kilometers. Located in Western Australia's capital, Perth, there is a variety of alien creatures living off its coastline. The octopus and the weedy sea dragon are the two of the most fascinating. Throughout the summer months when the water is warmer, vast numbers of common and gloomy octopuses can be found along the coastline. With eight tentacles, three hearts and blue blood, nature can't get much more alien. They can grow to be over one meter long and live for up to two years. The common octopus is an opportunistic hunter, usually hunting at dusk for crustaceans such as crabs and crayfish, as well as other bivalve mollusks. They have impeccable camouflage, and are able to change the colour and the texture of their skin to suit their surroundings. In more weedy parts of the coastline, you can find another real-life mythical creature, a cousin of the seahorse, the weedy sea dragon. These dragons won't be found flying through the skies, but instead drifting over weedy seabeds from Perth all the way around Australia's southern coast to Port Stephens in New South Wales. Like the octopus, they're masters of camouflage, looking exactly like drifting seaweed. They have small leaf-like appendages that resemble kelp, which aids their camouflage. Sea dragons are part of the same family as the seahorse and the pipefish. These species have fused jaws and rely on suction for feeding. They don't have stomachs, which means they have to continuously hunt and eat their prey, which consists of larval fish and small crustaceans such as plankton. Both of these creatures are listed as least concern on the ICUN red list of threatened species, but they are also great identifiers of water quality and available food sources. However, as both species don't have a migratory path, they're at the mercy of humans. Both the sea dragon and the octopus are desirable in the aquarium trade, and populations in particular areas can be decimated when the hunters go searching. This is why no precise locations are shown in this short film. Aside from that, they are both victims of habitat loss and degradation due to human activities and pollution. Eighty kilometers off the coast of Geraldton, lies an ecosystem left by time. Between the months of June and November, an ocean giant uses the area between the Houtman and Brolis Islands and mainland Australia as a rest area on their long migration. The humpback whale. Adults can grow up to be 15 meters long and weigh up to 40 metric tons. This is what desired whalers to hunt the humpback whale to near extinction in the 20th century. To prevent the extinction, commercial whaling was banned in 1966 due to the estimated world population being less than 5,000. However, this did not stop whaling as a whole. These days, because of the worldwide actions in 1966, the humpback population is thriving. And whale watching has become a popular tourism activity around the world, with the humpback whales being the stars of the show because of their playful nature. The humpbacks travel up the west coast of Australia from Antarctica all the way to the Exmouth Gulf and beyond to mate and give birth to their young. Once the mother has given birth, they begin their long journey down to the nutrient-rich waters off Antarctica. 
During this time, the mothers won't eat and will have to provide their calves with milk so they can grow a layer of blubber to protect themselves against the cold waters once they return to their feeding ground. Despite their size, the entire way they will face threats. Orcas, for example, will hunt them start to finish, especially aiming for the more vulnerable calves. And unfortunately, humans will have an impact here too. Boat strikes and entanglements are two major causes of whale injuries and even deaths. Since 2013, there has been 57 known entanglements off Australia's east coast, specifically in the shark nets, which aim to prevent sharks from reaching the beaches and tourists, but in fact do quite the opposite. Both entanglements and boat traffic can cause massive amounts of stress for the individual whales, who then may use more energy than they can spare so they won't be able to complete their long migration back down to Antarctica and are more likely to fall victim to the ruthless orca or even worse, succumb to the injuries caused by humans. Roughly a two hours drive north of Perth, you'll find yourself in the habitat of one of the most playful mammals in the animal kingdom, the Australian sea lion. You can find these curious mammals from the Abrolhos Islands in Western Australia to the Pages Islands in South Australia. A total of 66 breeding colonies have been identified, 28 in Western Australia and 38 in South Australia. There could be as few as 6,500 individuals left in the wild. The sea lions are opportunistic foragers, typically hunting squid, cuttlefish, octopus, sharks, southern rock lobster, as well as little penguins. So fortunately for them, their food source will remain intact. Although they're often seen playing in the shallows or laying on the beach sunbathing, it's not an all easy life for our sea lions. When out hunting, they become the hunted themselves, with larger predators such as great white sharks and orcas looking for a meal. In the shallows, a sea lion can outswim either of these large predators. But in the deep water, the sharks and the orcas have the element of surprise on their side, which gives them the advantage. Prior to the 1920s, the Australian sea lion was hunted for its fur. But even after large-scale hunting was ceased, it continued, and the sea lion still fell victim to humans. Between 1964 and 1975, a colony of 200 sea lions was reduced to less than 80 due to illegal shootings, where fishers would then use the dead sea lions as shark bait Along with being caught in fishing equipment and drowning, this resulted in them beginning to fear humans, and rightly so. Today, Australian fisheries are doing what they can to protect the species from going extinct, but due to slow breeding cycles, which can last up to 18 months, means the population is slow growing. And as more and more boat traffic occurs around their breeding islands, boat strikes become more common, as well as the sea lions completely vacating their breeding colony as they have been disturbed too much further regulating their breeding cycles. However, in some areas, such as Jurian Bay, they are respected by the local community, and tourists are able to have interactions with the wild animals as they have become adapted to humans. This should only be done with the professional, as they are still wild animals. Here they can be observed in their natural habitat, where they belong, and are not at risk. Off Australia's northwest coast, accurately named Australia's Coral Coast, lies a remarkable ecosystem which one of our more relaxed seafaring reptiles calls home. The Green Sea Turtle. These turtles can be found all over the world in tropical and subtropical oceans. Although sometimes green in colour, the Green Sea Turtle gets its name from the colour of a green layer of fat underneath the carapace more commonly referred to as the shell. These turtles are herbivores, mostly feeding on seagrasses where they act as gardeners by eating the tips of the grass in order to keep the rest of the shoot healthy. From birth, green sea turtles have a hard time. One in 1,000 will survive to adulthood, and once they do, they have to contend with their natural predators, such as tiger sharks, as well as humans, which are unfortunately a lot more devastating. Human activity is directly linked with the decline in population of green sea turtles. 
through hunting, poaching, egg harvesting, pollution, entanglements, and habitat loss, the green sea turtle is listed as endangered, meaning six out of the seven species of sea turtle are endangered. Green sea turtles somehow navigate back to the same beach to lay their clutch of eggs. To do this, they use an internal compass, but not much is known about how it works. In the nest, the gender of each hatchling is determined by the temperature. The higher the temperature, the more females will hatch. Due to climate change and rising ocean temperatures, the number of male hatchlings is decreasing. Eventually, there will not be enough males to reproduce, and soon after the species will disappear completely. The biodiversity on the west of Australia is among the highest in the world. However, through climate change, pollution and overfishing, the overall biodiversity is decreasing. The factors may not be largely present here in Australia, but as the ocean shares no borders, these actions can have a great effect on pelagic as well as reef populations around the world. This can remove large predators from the food chain, such as sharks, thus causing a population boom in their prey species, which will then consume their food source until it's vanished, as there is too few predators to control the population. This cycle can decimate the ocean ecosystem, especially reef systems. And as the global ocean temperature rises, more and more areas will fall victim to human impacts. The Ningaloo, although spectacular, has fallen victim to coral bleaching events in the past. And scientists predict by 2041, the Ningaloo will face large coral bleaching events twice per decade. As the reef takes 10 years to recover from a lone event, two occurring within 10 years will mean the demise of the reef and all of its inhabitants. For the not marine biologists around the world, deep diving into the biodiversity of the ocean is a brilliant way to see how finely linked all the species in the ocean are. Throughout the course of this short film, I've shown you five ocean-going creatures. The octopus, the weedy sea dragon, the humpback whale, the Australian sea lion, and the green sea turtle. If respected and helped, all of these species will survive. The octopus and the sea dragon are not in any immediate danger, but via human interaction, the number of them in the wild will become less and less. The humpback whale, a true real world representation that when the world wants to, they can bring a species back from the brink of extinction. This is what now needs to happen for the last two species on our list, the sea lion and the green sea turtle. Without more assistance, both of these species will become harder and harder to find until they will be gone from our world completely. And if this happens, we would have lost a lot more than just these two species. From snails to whales, there are 2,270 endangered species in our oceans around the world, and they all need our help. What can we do? Knowledge. Knowledge is the key to showing the true state of our oceans. By teaching people about how important they are in our lives, even if you don't step foot in them your whole life, is crucial to prolonging the health of the ocean. Spread awareness. Share this short film. Share other documentaries about the ocean and its inhabitants. Make people aware of what is happening in over 70% of our world. If you live too far away from the ocean or don't know how to contribute firsthand, Donations are a great way to support the ocean. There's plenty of not-for-profit organizations working to protect the ocean. Only one is protecting the natural environment as a whole. Project Q is protecting the sharks of Indonesia and the Ocean Cleanup who plan to clean up 90% of the floating ocean plastic around the world. This is just three of the many organizations you can spread awareness of to help protect our oceans. The oceans need our help. Over the course of this short film, I hope you've learned something new about the creatures of Western Australia and the ocean as a whole, and truly hope you'll join the fight to protect our oceans, because they need it.